I think as a team effort, you know, definitely a good bonus structure in place would be a good idea for a team. Um, and I think that's that's something that I've always been for, as long as the doctor's really managing his, their overhead and taking really good control of keeping the practice healthy. Because the one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure the practice stays healthy to take care of all of the team members and the patients. This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I'm Katie Polson, a dental hygienist and your host. Welcome to Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. I am Katie Polson, and we are here today recording our 100th episode. Before I brought on our amazing guest today, I was going through counting just to make sure, and I can't believe it, guys. I've We've done it. And if you've listened to even half of them, I am so <laughs> grateful to you. So uh, anyway, so so glad to be able to do this. It's such a fun little gig. It's not, it's uh, it's something that has evolved into my favorite part of my job here at Dental Intelligence. And so I'm just really grateful to have the opportunity to, to be able to talk with amazing people like uh, Kay Huff today that was, we're talking to today. So, uh, but before we get started, I wanted to welcome those that are first time listeners. This is a a uh, 30 minute fast paced actionable items that we're going to talk about where the, the goal is to tackle a problem. And today we're tackling, um, how to have the best last quarter and, and, and what that means and, um, and all of, and some advice from Kay on how to do that. So, uh, we also, if you are, is Facebook is your jam and you like to be there. Um, we would love for you to join our Facebook dental intelligence community. We've got some, uh, like-minded people who, to, um, talk about data and automation and um, give some great tips on our software as well. So uh, go and join us there. And if you're not a current customer and you want to be one, we have a great giveaway for listeners to our show. You can go to get.dentalintel.com forward slash podcast to get $50 when you complete a demo. Um, so I'll make sure that that link is all show in our show notes. So without further ado, with all of that being said, I'd like to introduce Kay Huff. She's uh, a wonderful partner of ours here at Dental Intelligence. Um, and I've had the pleasure of, of being here on multiple occasions. She's a wonderful human being and so grateful to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here, especially on the hundredth episode. Like how lucky am I? That's lucky, right? I can't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we, not, we could not have chosen a better person to come on for the hundredth episode. I know we should have so, champagne. Like what's going on? I know on? we should be doing <laughs> something fun. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, anyway cool. so yeah, ahead, so glad. No, so give us a little bit of background about yourself, um, how you landed in this wonderful world of dentistry. So I have been in dentistry for probably over 40 years. That's kind of given away my age, but it's been a long time. And I'm lucky that I started really young, like in high school. So I started, my my sister was in dentistry. Um, my whole family kind of was somehow connected in dentistry. And so it was really just something that I was passionate about. And I, you know, started out as a dental assistant and I loved, loved, loved that. And I worked with really good doctors who, you know, really brought me to amazing places to learn, like amazing. I've, I've been trained by some of the best. And then I, um, my, as this is funny, my very first airplane ride was going to a dental convention <laughs> and I'll never forget it. I remember I felt so important. It was just so exciting. And I heard Linda Miles and I literally connected with Linda Miles and said, this is what I want to do. And I never looked back, never looked back. And, you know, this is probably back in what the eighties, the early eighties. And, you know, back then we couldn't just pick up the phone and call because it was so expensive. I mean, long distance phone calls were like, oh, I can't remember, 10, 20 cents a minute. So, yeah. you know, she wrote me letters and write letters. And so she continued to stay in touch with me throughout my entire career. So yeah. I absolutely love what I do in dentistry. And I just, I can't, I can't tell you how much I enjoy it. Yeah. One thing I love that you pointed out there is, is, a, is having a wonderful mentor. And I think that that is, I know that, you know, the ADA and ADHA and a lot of the, the uh, professional associations really, um, they have a mentor program, but I love that you pointed that out, that that's part of your story is having, having a great mentor. Cause I, I had one as well, Susan Alexander, shout out to you. Like, I feel like, um, 
And if you can be that for somebody else, how, how wonderful. So awesome. That's so great. It is. And I'm lucky because I have several. I mean, Linda has been like great to me. And she actually came to my very first time I ever spoke at Chicago Midwinter. She sat on my front row and we had a blast together. So that was great. And then, of course, Chuck Cohen. Chuck always pushes me out of my comfort zone. I think you have to have someone that constantly says, oh, no, you can do more. No, you can do more. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's always like, you know, getting me out there. And so, and I think that's important too, just like we do in dental offices. Like when we go in as coaches, we are challenged to be able to take a team and like push them out of their comfort zone or take a doctor and, you know, say, Hey, no, your leadership needs to grow if this is your vision. And so I get excited about all that. So yeah. anyway, I didn't mean to, so what's your first question? I'll no, no, on. you're good. I, we, <laughs> I mean, this is an important topic. So I love that we're talking about it. Well, so the end of the end of the year is one of those times when people are trying to like, well, it's, first of all, it's a little bit tricky. Um, case acceptance is something that typically goes down at the end of the year, although people want to get in just because of holiday spending and we're here at a possible recession. And I feel like people are starting to like tighten up their purse strings a little bit. And um, what advice do you guys have? Uh, do you have for practices to optimize their end of the year benefits um, while getting patients to say yes, right, to to the treatment that they you bring them in for? So the very first thing, you know, is really and truly use technology, right? Use technology to reach out to those patients because there are so many patients that, you know, have dental benefits. They don't use them. They literally just lose them. I think, I mean, if I can't even remember, I said, I think it was like only, I can't, wish I could remember the stats, but very few people actually use their benefits. So I would say definitely use technology to reach out to those patients and make sure that you get them in. I always tell my offices to start like in October, pushing those letters out because a lot of my offices really want to close down and spend time with their family during December. So they let their patients know, Hey, we're only going to be open, you know, two weeks in December. So please make sure you get those appointments reserved and make sure that, you know, that, that they, they show up because it's going to be important if you want to take advantage of your insurance that you do come in. So, you know, that is one way to doing it. Technology, I think, you know, then once you do that, making sure that you follow up through, you know, um, text messages and um, emails and making sure you reach out. There's, there's so much more advantages now than we've ever had before to be able to contact our patients. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first thing we do is really start in October, start contacting those patients and start getting the schedules in place. And really and truly control your schedule, make sure that you have the proper blocks in place so that you know, you know, what you want to hit and what you need to, what you need to do to maintain your office. Um, and so I think that's also important. And then the most important thing you can do as far as with your patients and, you know, talking about your services is not, is not really just, just telling them, but asking them, showing them, sitting down with them next to next. This is what I see. This is what I know. And this is what I, this is what we need to do. Like we really need to kind of put this together and show them as you present. I think that people listen. Everybody wants a beautiful smile. You can't tell me that one person that I, it breaks my heart when I see someone smile and they're small like this. Oh, what, what what happened? You know, anyone that ever came into our office, we always made sure that we did everything in our power to give them that smile because you know they want it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, yeah, you know no, they do. Nobody's gonna say no, thank you to feeling good about the way that they, what their smile is, or, or, or being able to feel good when they're eating, which is the most, which is more important. Yeah. And, and it's also, it's, it's their health. It's their overall health. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. So I really say, get into that, like, you know, explain to them how it connects with the rest of their body, really show them what we can do for them. And then, you know, have place to have things in place to where will help them pay it out. Like, you know, use care credit or some type of, of, of form of payments that they can do that not not in office but yet that's out of offices that would help them get through um, and be able to say yes to the treatment yeah I love that advice because I think oftentimes I mean as a hygienist myself presenting treatment or helping you know a doctor present treatment um it's easy to get into the rut of just um offering the the things that are blaringly like a problem right and 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 then that's it. Like you don't, or, or, or maybe giving up the treatment that you know that they're going to say yes to. And I know that, that, I mean, like, so you're avoiding like talking about like, Hey, what, like, what about your smile? Do you not like, right. Or, you know, those kind of questions. And I, and I know that this is, um, this is not new information. I mean, people, people talk about this all the time. Right. But I think there, I think it's really important to continually talk because it's just so easy to fall back into that, that habit of like, just, because it takes more time. It just takes more time to have 
those conversations, but, um, I definitely think you should always, you know, use your consult room. I'll, I'll see consult rooms and like the door shut, they'll use it for storage. Like, no, you know, use your consult room, bring them in there. And really, actually, the best thing that you can do also is make sure that you um, have, you know, have their pictures up, have their x-rays up, ask yeah. them exactly what do you, you know, what do you see? What do you, what would you like to have happen and get them involved in the conversation? I think that's always super important. Yeah, really good. Awesome. Well, I wanted to talk, uh, spend a little bit more time on and um, team like team management and team appreciation because I know you're so good at talking about this kind of thing. So, what advice I guess to you? Uh, oftentimes, the end of the year is when, and regardless of whether at the end of the year is when you should show appreciation or not, what advice do you have um, on helping? Especially culture is a really big topic right now. Yeah, um, it's big. So, what advice do you have for for teams and helping them show appreciation? So I think, first of all, I think the very the last quarter of the year, um, even like in December, you should do a getaway with your team. You should get away and you should really and truly look at how your office did. Like, how did we do this year and celebrate? I always say celebrate your success. So many offices look at what they don't do and what they with the negative. So stop doing that, you know, start looking at what do we what did we do this year? What went well? And where do we want to change? Where do you want to go? Like, and then from this to here and what, what happened if, let's say we didn't, we didn't make this mark, but what happened and what could we do differently? And I always say, empower your team members. The one thing that I don't, I think that a doctor cannot do dentistry and run his entire practice. And I don't think that one person should be in control. So I say every single person on that team, their voice is important, everyone. And so when we get away and have a getaway, everyone has something that they bring to the table that they talk about, something that they're responsible for in that practice, because that's going to make a difference. And that makes you feel better too, because you feel like you're important. Am I right? Yeah, for sure. And yeah. so I say that team members should get away and really look at their numbers, see what they want to do differently and implement a plan for this coming year. Mm. This is where they'll also look and they'll make new goals. They'll set new goals for themselves. They'll, they'll review their scheduling blocks. They'll review um, their new patients. You know, they'll look at their attrition and say, wow, in our attrition, what did we do? Cause we're going to have attrition, right? But were there patients that we shouldn't have lost that maybe we should have done something about how did they slip how did they slip away mm -hmm. I always think that so many of our offices put so much emphasis on new patients where I think that's important but I also think it, in keeping our patients of record active is also important so I'd say go away you know use use the boards like bring everybody out plan have have your team day have it where everyone has something to do reset your scheduling reset all your goals and and put your plan together yeah i love that idea and i i love that you're like setting it you're like they're suggesting to have them like do an off-site of some sort where you're not in the practice where you could easily get distracted on taking care of a patient or you know, restocking something or whatever. And, and so that's a really great idea. And I think fifth and what you're describing makes me feel like how you'd be really empowering your team members, right. To be more involved in, and get like having a stake in like the success of the practice, which in my opinion would create lifers, right? Like people that would just want to stay with yeah. you forever. Yeah, absolutely. And not well, think about that. Like, let's just say that I am the person that does the hygiene um, recall. I could look and say, well, based on what based on what I know this year, this is how many recalls we've done. This is how many recalls we, we've actually scheduled and they've come back for their second one. And here's what we've lost. So why have we lost these and what could we do differently? You could look at your active therapy numbers. You can say, okay, based on our active therapy, which is root plan and scaling, did we hit that number? Were we at 35% of our overall hygiene production? And if we weren't, why, what stopped that? Like, was it because we didn't have, we said a whole day of didn't nothing but continuing cares and we didn't have those, those different um, procedures in there. So we saw, you know, we ended up not hitting the numbers numbers that we needed to, or we didn't take care of the patients that we diagnosed because we had no room for it. So this is where a team comes up with a huge plan. And I always say this, I think the person that owns that has to come up with a solution. Like if I owned that part of it, I would say, okay, so the doctor should say, so what's your solution? What do you think? And then once you share that, you know, all come together and come up with something that we agree on it's, it's, it's the same thing as having office policies. I always, it's funny. I always say, Every year you should review your office policies, right? Yeah. And 
both clinical team and front desk should know the policies, not just the front desk or not just, you know, the, the admin team, everyone. Why is that important? Because if we all know them, if a patient asks about it, we can all understand what those policies are together. So really you're outside of the office, you're just reviewing your entire office and you're putting that plan together that's gonna make you really and truly hit the goals for next year. And your team is gonna be fired up. And I do think it's out of the office because I think you could also do a fun day too, do something fun together at the end of it to celebrate what you've done. So do I believe in a bonus program? I believe in a bonus program if it only you know, allows the entire team to get it because listen, yeah. hygienists can't get a bonus without yeah. the admin and admin can. So I think as a team effort, you know, definitely a good bonus structure in place would be a good idea for a team. Um, and I think that's, that's something that I've always been for as long as the doctors really managing his, their overhead and taking really good control of keeping the practice healthy. Cause the one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure the practice stays healthy to take care of all of the team members and the patients. Yeah. Really great advice. Um, I, I love that idea. And I've never, I mean, <clears throat> so my dad, my dad and my brother are dentists and um, I, we've never like, I mean, we, our family vacation, I guess, is, <laughs> but no, we've never, I've never like gone with our, with our team. And, but I, but I've been to enough dental conferences now and seeing the teams together, like Adam, when we were there this last uh, last couple of months ago and seeing the people that brought their teams to Adam, I was like, oh my gosh. And like, you could just see like all of the little connections that they were making and like the 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 things that they just could not have happened in, inside the practice. So I love that idea. It's one of those things that is takes going to take some planning, right? Like we were like, if you're listening to this and think, oh, I want to implement that. It's not probably going to happen in December, but doing it in a different time of year or taking them to a, a dental conference at a different time is a great idea. Super, super I think it cool. should automatically be put on your calendar every single year. Yeah. One thing that's so important is that it should be put on your calendar just so that, just so that you can make sure it happens because if you know, have you ever seen an office where that they start off with like six operatories and 15 years later, they still have six operatories. Yeah. And like, so what, what's, what's gone on? Like, why didn't they grow? And I think that things like this are going to help an office continue to grow and to continue to take care of their patients. Mm -hmm. So this is such an important time yeah. right now. Yeah. And I think patients, when they walk in the door, you agree that they can feel whether that team is connected or not. Oh yeah, absolutely. Your patients can tell if you're, if you're, if your team members like the doctor that they work for. Yeah. Like, right, right now I have a, my, my, my primary care physician, right? I, he is a good, he's a good doctor. He's a really good doctor, which is why I go to him, but his staff turnover is horrible. And I can tell that they don't like to work. Like they don't like to work for him. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I should support this guy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I can tell as a, pa as a patient. So yeah, your patients. Can Have you ever him. asked him why he has so much turnover? Have you ever said anything? No, cause I feel bad. He's been, uh, maybe it'll help him. Maybe I, he's been my doctor since I was 12 or something. Oh, like, has I think he? I need to move on. <laughs> you know what? Oh, I mean, so if, if you're a doctor out there that is constantly losing your team members, don't think that your patients don't notice that, right? Oh, it's, yeah. That's a good message, what you just Especially said. Especially as they come in, they say, oh, it seems like there's somebody new every time I come in here. They're not saying like, oh, that's fun for you. That, like, Or like, I like to meet new people. They're saying like, what is going on here? That's making it so that... I have to meet somebody new every time I come. Like, and you know what's really hard too? Them. That if you're trying to implement new like policies and procedures, and they hear it from a new patient, they're like, "What? But no, I know I'm better than you." Like, like the yeah. patients, no, that's not what I was told. So yeah. it's really difficult to, to have that. So you know, having employees, you know, team members stay and 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 be with a doctor. And I think the doctors out there that are that are fun. I mean, they are fun. They, they they want, they empower their people to grow. They really encourage continuing ed. I think continuing ed is super important. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they they just, they work together as a team. I think it's the way to do it. And yeah. you can fill those offices when you walk into them. And we should say this, I guess, with a caveat that like, there are some stuff that's out of your control. I mean, like the staffing shortages that we had are insane, which I think, which I think is why the culture and keeping your team members right now is such a hot topic, but, um, okay. So I guess some of the, I, and maybe we've already talked on it, but if you have any other like top advice that you give to practices as they round out their end, their end of the year, um, and really try to have like the best quarter they've had this year. 
learn more about KPIs. There's there's three KPIs that the dentist knows. Do you know what they are? There's three. They always know. <laughs> I'm sure it's production of some production, sort. Production, collection, yep. and new patients. Yeah. There's so many more that are so important that manage a practice. Take time, you know, do a snapshot and really actually learn because you can learn so much. I mean, what is amazing about Dental Intel is how the material, just how everything just comes up at one in one push of a button. I just love that. And I think there's so much to learn. It just opens my eyes up. Do you know one of the 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 thing that I thought was the most wow for me about one of the recoveries that Dental Intel put out there was that if you look at your active patient base, your active patient base, which is anyone that's been in the practice in the last 18 months, according to DI, right? Mm -hmm. How many of those patients actually have a scheduled appointment? What would your guess be? Do you know? I, do, I don't know this. I don't know this number. Okay. I, so this, what, what, what would you guess? So think about that. If you had, if you had to guess and you had to look at your active patient base, which you, let's say that you have, let's say you have 2000. Mm -hmm. What percent of those do you think, and they've all been in the last 18 months, have an active appointment? Um, I'm, a, I'm a cynic. So I'm going to say 30%. <laughs> well, no, that, that's, so it's actually right now it's 49%, which well, I was too opposite. Yeah. I was going to say 80%. I was going to say, oh, oh really? no. Yeah. Until, until you really uncover that data, like I would have thought, and so every time I ask my doctors this question, they always say 80 to 85. Oh, really? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I, I work here and I'm also a cynic, but I, but yeah, I, it doesn't surprise me. And it also doesn't surprise me that people think that most of their patients are coming back or they yes. have an active appointment. So how do they slip between the cracks? Like what happens if we're rescheduling, you know, 94% of our hygiene patients, you know, when we're rescheduling all right. So what is going on? What policy and where are they slipping at? So that's where I would say I challenge a doctor to really open up or, and, and look more at like what's really going on in my practice besides those three KPIs. There's mm -hmm. so many of them out there that you should look at. Like attrition is another big one. Attrition is huge. Um, I think that one is, is is really something to look at. And then again, you know, your perio. So if you look at your perio and you look at your breakdown, you know, 80% of the production should come from, or 65% should come from the doctor, 35% should come from the hygiene. And then 35% of that should come from perio. Very few doctors hit that. So according to the stats that you have, I mean, it's very small. So we definitely need to work on getting that up. Yeah. I love that you're, you're pointing some out because I think oftentimes, especially if you're new to dental intelligence or you have used analytics or metric or metrics and reporting from another company before, it's easy to log into a dashboard like that and get very easily overwhelmed and want to try to fix everything at once. Um, but I love that you're pointing out some, some things to kind of start at, right? Um, and like you said, get your team together, uh, uh, you know, say, Hey, we did really great at these things. And then like, let's focus on one or two things that we're going to fix. <laughs> right. It is such a power. It is so powerful. So just recently, as like two weeks ago, I was in one of my offices and we actually to have dental intel and we actually were going over it in a team meeting and that, I mean, they were using maybe a small percent of it. So because it's, but like you said, there's so much great information there. I absolutely love the videos. You can watch the videos and learn more about like that KPI and how it works. So I would definitely tell you, please make sure you look at more than just those three KPIs. Again, there's so many, out, so much out there to look at. Another big one that jumps out at me too is that, you know, we have to be careful too. When we look at the end of the year, we look at our outstanding insurance, our outstanding accounts receivable. What what are those numbers? And I always say, make sure you check that credit report because you know it's really important to make sure that a lot of patients will have credits on their accounts, and we don't even know it. So, it, and if your yeah. computer system is set up, sometimes when you run your accounts receivable, if the credits are on there, it will make it cushions it. So all of a sudden, when I go in and take the credits off, they go, "Whoa, that's more than I thought." Well, that's because the credits were cushioning it. And I, I've, I've mm -hmm. been into practices where there's a hundred thousand dollars in credit. So again, oh at your end of the year meeting, you're mm -hmm. going over all of these numbers and you're saying, wow, what can we do to fix it? And how does it work? And the number one thing that I've seen right now with credits is that the insurance companies have like, we have built out our full fee to the insurance companies and it posts to the ledger, our reduced fees. But for some reason we've gotten an increase and when the person posting the check, they posted the patient, they posted the increase as a credit to the patient and it's not. So it becomes a lot of cleanup 
So if yeah. you do this ongoing, it's just going to make sure that you keep your practices numbers up, your insurance clean, you get paid it matches. It's, it, it all works out. Yeah. So yeah. I we like to say bad it. data, bad data in, in is bad data out. Right. So if, yes. if you, if you don't keep it clean, then it's, it's really, it, it's really easy for your numbers to get, to get wonky real quick. Yeah, but people get so overwhelmed. It's really simple. You know, again, assign certain people to certain areas of the eye mm. and then let them go after it. Let them own it. You know, let them mm. own that part of it. I think it's such a great thing. So yeah, you don't have to do it all yourself. I love that. No, yeah. I don't. I, I tell my office managers at a team meeting, you should not be talking. The office manager and doctor, this is their time to be quiet and say, hey, how's my office doing? Based on what your roles are, how are we doing and where can we improve? And I think that's the way a meeting should be ran. If you're, if you're doing a team, if you're doing a team meeting and the office manager is doing all the talking, that's not a team meeting. Mm -hmm. So a team meeting is where we come up with some great ideas and we talk about the sections that were in our practice. So I, you know, I'm just so passionate about that. I just feel like it's so important to do that. Oh, and it, it's such a big great difference. advice. Okay. Well, it's been a while, a, a really fast half an hour for me. We'll have you on again. <laughs> Um, the, we do ask this last question of every single guest of our show, and that's because growth means a lot to dental intelligence, and it also means something different to everyone. So what does growth in dentistry mean to you? Um, I mean, well, as far as my growth or, yeah, or however you, yeah. I, what is every single year I'm going to grow. I mean, this year, my goal is to write a book. Every single year, I want to continue oh. to do something where I can give back to the dental field. I think it's so important to do that. And I should do the same thing that I push my offices to do. Mm. So, you know, I want to, as a speaker, I want to make sure I'm, I stay up. I, I still go in and do in-office coaching because I want to make sure I'm staying in touch with what's going on with the practice because I want to make sure that I always give out good information because it's important to me that anyone that I work with or touch, I want to make sure I leave a positive impact. Oh, that's so great. Well, the, those practices that, yeah, that um, get to work with you are very lucky. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? It's really simple. It's the letter K and then H-U-F-F at Benco, B-E-N-C-O.com. I would love to get together and even do a snapshot with them and kind of from a coaching standpoint, tell them what it looks like. I think it's always good. I just, I think, again, there's so much information from just a snapshot that's unbelievable. So yeah. absolutely. So please awesome. reach out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure to add your email as well to our show notes. So that's great. Thank you so much again for, for joining us. It's been such a pleasure to, to be able to have a chance to talk with you today. This has been Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. I'm Katie Polson, and thank you to our marketing department for all their work on this show as well. Keep growing.